What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. In today's video, we are going to be analyzing five to six energy companies. So legacy energy stocks uh, we're talking about. And uh, these are going to be in all three segments. So we've got uh, upstream, midstream, downstream oil and gas companies, natural gas companies. I'll break down exactly what those are. I've got a full spreadsheet for our comparison that I spent the last few hours kind of building and kind of putting together all the numbers. So again, if you guys enjoy this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. I know you've been asking a lot of questions on which energy stocks to really be buying that are in the oil and gas sector, well, this is going to be the video for you uh, because we are going to be com comparing and contrasting between all these different US-based companies. As always, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. I do want to mention that I updated our fundamental analysis courses. So I've added four new bonus lectures for everyone, including the downloadable spreadsheet, updated spreadsheet for intrinsic value with the weighted average between earnings and free cash flow. And of course, options course, I included two more bonus lectures on implied volatility and mistakes to avoid when it comes to selling options. So all that is going to be available for you to watch. Again, links are going to be down below if you're already enrolled in these courses. Of course, you have lifetime access to all these updates and all these uh, courses and lectures. So Again, if you want to join, link's going to be down below for our fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and of course, options trading courses as well. And the bundle obviously is the best value bundle with a huge discount as well. So this right here is going to be our spreadsheet, okay? So we are looking at Chevron, Exxon Mobil, Occidental, Devon Energy, Valero, and Marathon Petroleum. First things first, I want to break down the three different segments in the oil and gas industry itself. There's the upstream, there's the midstream, and the downstream. Think of it as upstream as the production and the drilling, right? So there's a lot of manufacturing of oil and gas extraction, right, from from the uh, from the earth. Basically, you extract all the oil and gas, and then the, that's upstream, by the way. Midstream is basically storage and transportation, and downstream is refinery. So refining that uh, oil that's been extracted from the earth to diesel, to fuel, to things that we can actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, retail outlets to basically bringing it to the consumers. So those are the three main segments within which the oil and gas industry operates. So again, you'll notice the upstream companies are involved in the expo exploration and production of oil and gas. Midstream companies are responsible for transportation and storage and downstream companies are refined crude oil and natural gas into finished products such as gasoline, diesel fuel, jet fuel, heating oil, all those things. And there are also companies that are integrated, right? So in addition to these three main segments, there are also a number of companies that provide services to the oil and gas industry. Of course, there are equipment providers, manufacturers, but some of the largest oil and gas companies in the world are integrated companies, meaning they operate in multiple segments of the industry. For example, ExxonMobil and Chevron are both integrated oil and gas companies that have operations in all three segments, upstream, midstream, and downstream. Uh, and that's exactly what we are going to discuss. Again, ExxonMobil, Chevron are upstream, but also downstream and midstream. But these are midstream companies. So basically storage and pipelines. Uh, and of course, downstream companies, Valero and Marathon. So I do have a list of companies that we have you know, chosen here. Chevron, Exxon are going to be integrated. Occidental is also an integrated uh, company. Devon Energy is mostly on upstream. Valero and MPC are downstream. So we are going to analyze a whole slew of companies within these different segments to better understand is there any opportunity? Are there on a relative scale, uh, one better than the other? Of course, we know that Occidental is Warren Buffett's investment. He's starting to invest more and more into this company. So we're going to analyze that as well. Now, when it comes to revenues and earnings, right? It's very clear that uh, ExxonMobil and Chevron definitely have a huge leadership there. I mean, they are making, you know, close to over $582 billion combined in revenue, right? ExxonMobil, a very, very significant player, $367, $368 billion, and Chevron revenue coming in at $214 billion. Occidental is an integrated player, so very similar to Chevron and Exxon, but definitely a lot smaller, right? So, you know, Exxon is 10 times bigger than Occidental in terms of revenue, but $31.5 billion in Occidental's revenue. This is trailing 12 months, by the way, so last 12 months. And Devon Energy is half of Exxon, uh, not half of Exxon, half of Occidental at $16 billion. But these downstream companies like Valero and Marathon are very, very big. So $150, $157 billion in revenue is what they are looking at. So, of course, when the revenue is higher, the profits follow. So earnings for the last 12 months, Chevron 
Exxon's the highest at $51 billion because it's got the highest level of revenue. Uh, Chevron is the second highest at over $30 billion because it's got the second biggest in terms of revenue. Uh, Occidental is also $6.8 billion because, again, it is lower in terms of the actual uh, revenue number. And Devon Energy is $4.7 billion. And, of course, Valero and MPC are bigger than Occidental and Devon but of course, far smaller than Chevron and Exxon. So 10 to $12 billion is what we have. Now, the interesting thing is that Devon Energy actually has the best margins, right? So it's got 29.8% margins, right? When it comes to net margins, so almost 30% margins. And that's probably because they are not as involved in other parts of the overall industry, right? So they're only focusing on upstream business. So that could be one of the reasons why their margins are slightly better, uh, actually significantly better than compared to integrated companies and even downstream companies that are significantly better, 29.8%, right? And Occidental definitely stands out, even though it's lower in terms of revenues and profitability, it is far better than Chevron and Exxon, right? 21% margin versus Chevron and Exxon, they're almost identical at over 14% net margins, but Occidental definitely has the lead there at over 21%. And of course, downstream companies have very, very low margins. We're looking at 7 to 8%. Of, um, of downstream like Valero and MPC, very, very low margins. So Occidental stands out a little bit here at 21.5% margins, even though it's integrated. And Devon, obviously, since it's only focusing on upstream, definitely stands out and wins uh, in the net margins at over 29%. Now, when it comes to the last 10 years worth of revenue, earnings, and free cash flow, Chevron and Exxon have been basically flat, right? There's not been a lot of growth. They have pretty much stayed where they have been over the last 10 years in terms of revenue. Occidental has grown at 4.5% every single year. That's pretty respectable growth. Um, Devon Energy has grown by over 4.2%. Valero has been flat, very similar to Chevron and Exxon. And then Marathon Petroleum has also grown by over 5.3%. Now, in terms of earnings, uh, Marathon Petroleum has actually seen the best growth uh, in terms of earnings at over 19% over the last 10 years. That's pretty phenomenal. That's actually a growth stock type earnings. Uh, Valero here, a little bit under 15% and Devon Energy at over 12.8%. So it really, I mean, upstream, downstream companies have actually done really well in terms of that growth in earnings per share over the last 10 years, whereas the integrated companies, the earnings have been mostly flat. Revenues have been flat for Occidental. It's been growing a little bit, but earnings have been up about 1% to 3%, maybe 5% for Exxon, which is good, but revenue has been mostly flat. So that means the margins have gotten better. They've slightly become more efficient in their process, but 5.2% is the earnings growth. Free cash flow, 20 to 23% for Chevron and Exxon. So these behemoths have grown their cash flows really well. Occidental, not so much. However, I will point out the last three years, Occidental's growth in free cash flow has uh, been better than that of Occidental and of Chevron, right? So if you come over to our uh, spreadsheet here, which I'll go over here in just a minute for uh, the technical analysis. So if I come over to Occidental Petroleum, if I come down to free cash flows on an annual basis, uh, what you'll notice is that growth has been very, very strong, right? So 40% growth, then 432% growth, and then a 62% growth. So last three years have been very, very phenomenal for uh, Occidental Petroleum as opposed to uh, the other companies out there, right? So if you come over to uh, ExxonMobil, you'll notice that the growth rate has not been that strong. So come over to uh, cash flows, uh, free cash flows. It, it is good, but it is not as strong as that of Occidental, right? In terms of growth rate. Of course, it's still bigger than that of Occidental, but it's only grown 62% when Occidental was doing like 400 plus percent in 2022, 2021. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Marathon Petroleum at over 20%. We got Valero at 7.6%. So that's respectable growth. And Devon Energy surprisingly has very inconsistent and negative free cash flows. And for those reasons, we're not able to calculate uh, those numbers. And this right here is actually since 2017 for Chevron. So I've got a note there that means Chevron's free cash flow has only grown by over 20% since 2017. Now, when it comes to the forecasted growth, right? This was already the past. This was the previous 10 years, the past years. When it comes to the next five years, it is actually quite shocking that not a single company except for Occidental is expected to grow. So Chevron, Exxon, these are straight out of Seeking Alpha's analyst estimates. Revenue EPS expected to decline for Exxon at 14% per year um, and about 0.6% every single year for EPS. Um, for Devon Energy, 1.7% decline in revenues. 
with about a half a percent increase in EPS. Valero, 6.7% decline in revenue and a 22% decline in earnings per share. And Marathon Petroleum is expected to also decline in both revenues and earnings over the next five years, 10% and 7% respectively. It's only Occidental that is expected to increase by about half a percent revenue every single year, which is practically flat, but EPS expected to increase by 5% every single year for the next five years. So that's the only stock on this entire list for the next five years forecast that's expected to grow both revenues and earnings per share. There's no chance in hell that these companies would have net debt because they are heavily indebted. And of course, Occidental leading the way, even though it's got the most earnings per share growth and revenue growth expected, it's got a net debt of over $20 billion, which is pretty significant. So $20 billion is going to be that net debt for Occidental, which obviously is a little bit too high. We got Chevron Exxon sitting at just under $12 billion and Devon and Valero have the lowest at 6.3, 6.25 and MPC also very comparable to Occidental at over $17 billion. So Marathon Petroleum, even though the past performance has been really good, I mean, they're the only company that have been able to grow revenues, earnings and cash flows at a very strong rate. Um, they're also trading at an all-time high, uh, the, but the future forecast does not look great, right? We've got a negative 10% growth in revenue, negative 7% growth in EPS, $17 billion worth of net debt. So they definitely don't have, you know, very strong fundamentals or forecasted growth. Now, when it comes to the valuation, okay, and in terms of dividend yield, we've got Exxon Chevron paying the highest dividend yield at over 13%, actually 3%, not 13, 3%. Uh, we've got Valero at 2.76. We got Occidental a little bit over 1%, Devon at 1.62, and MPC just over two, just under 2%. So these two companies, obviously the big uh, energy companies definitely do win when it comes to dividend yield. Um, but of course, we know the forecasted growth is really brutal, especially for ExxonMobil. Revenue is expected to decline by 14% per year. That's not great. Um, and then, of course, Occidental is 1%, which is quite reasonable. 2.7% for Valero. But again, the forecasted growth is pretty brutal, right? EPS expected to decline by over 22%. Now, because of these expected uh, declines in the growth, uh, the valuation obviously is going to be a huge flip because the companies that are expected to decline in the next five years are trading at the lowest valuation. That makes sense because nobody really wants to own the stock. However, these are also the companies that are trading at a 52-week high right now. So the price is really, really high trading at a 52-week high. Occidental, on the other hand, is turning at a 17 times earnings multiple and a little bit over two times sales, which definitely is a little bit more expensive compared to the other integrated companies like Exxon Chevron trading at 12.8, 12.4, and a price of sales at 1.5 and price of free cash flow at 8.3, 8.4. Um, so it definitely does trade a little bit of a premium relative to the other companies within the same sector. Devon Energy at 8.8 .8, and we got a little bit over two times sales and just under five times cash flow for this company. So uh, from all the information that we just analyzed, you know, based on the actual revenues, based on the margins, the last 10 years, next 10 years growth and net debt and all those things, I do like Occidental very much because, of course, it's got 21% net margins, which is much better than the integrated sector of other Exxon Chevron. It's also got the best forecasted growth for the next five years, which could you know, basically be the reason why Warren Buffett is investing in this company. The only concerning factor is the $20 billion of net debt. However, they are growing free cash flows pretty aggressively. So you can see, come over here, this is Occidental Petroleum's cash flows. Uh, you'll notice that they have been able to grow cash flows really well, as I pointed out earlier. Uh, very nice, consistent growth, you know, now sitting at over $12 billion. So it's possible that their net debt continues to go down. In fact, it has been going down. So if you come over to uh, the, the net debt for the company here, uh, it's been going down, right? So it's gone from 36 billion to 35 to 27 to now 20. Uh, and I think the expectation would be for it to continue to slow down and go down uh, as the company continues to pay down debt. So that is the only concerning factor. Yes, the valuation is a little bit more expensive, but I think it deserves the valuation because of the expected growth in earnings and the higher margins. So it does have higher margins compared to the other, other players in this sector. Uh, but I'm also going to say that I do also like Devon Energy because Devon Energy's margins are very high, 29.8%. And you've got pretty strong growth in the last 10 years. Free cash flow. I mean, if you come back to Devon Energy, what does that look like in terms of free cash flow for this company? It's been a little bit more inconsistent, but uh, it's not terrible, I think. Uh, so what are we sitting at? We are at 
Uh, 3.4 billion. I mean, it's grown in the last two years, three years, but it, you can see that it's been, you know, negative and then positive and then really, really low. Um, again, you can see the inconsistency in the free cash flows for Devon Energy over the last six quarters. So again, up, down, all over the place. So that's been, you know, a little bit of a concern, but it is expected to grow EPS by about half a percent. So it's the only company along with Occidental that's expected to grow their earnings per share. They've got a lower net debt and the valuation is quite reasonable and a higher yield compared to Occidental. Of course, lower than Exxon Chevron. But some of these legacy companies like the traditional big Chevron Exxon companies, like the growth for the next five years is brutal. I mean, it's not really expected to grow all that much. So coming over to the technical analysis now, this is going to be Exxon Mobile, what you will notice is that it's been mostly consolidating sideways uh, for the longest time. Uh, this right here has been the range within which it's been trading at. This is the overall uptrending channel within which it was trading, but now it's starting to really consolidate, get rejected here at these levels, which is going to be sitting roughly at $117. We are approaching that level once again, very strong support sitting right over here. We validated that level at $100 per share. So right now, of course, trading at about 17% higher than its support at the moment. Going over to Chevron, a very identical chart to that of ExxonMobil, but of course, it's not towards its upper range of $180, $172. That's the resistance to watch, but it's got another resistance that it's going to come up to that's going to be sitting right over there. It's going to be about $167 per share. So that's going to be that level to watch. And of course, very strong support sitting roughly in the $149, $150 per share. And this right here, of course, is the overall uptrending channel within which it was trading for the longest time before consolidating sideways. Uh, next one on the list is going to be Marathon Petroleum. And this is a company that, like I said earlier, is trading at a new 52-week high. So this is the overall, you know, uptrending channel. It had a few different types of uptrending channels. So this was a little bit of a uh, falling wedge, I should call it. And then, of course, we got a break breakdown, sold right back, you know, down to this level at like closer to $110. And then since it's just been on a massive move to the upside, like this right here, new 52 week highs sitting at 156. So I think it's just a just a level for us to wait and see where it goes next. But we are coming coming up to its higher high inside this uptrending channel. So I'd be very cautious with Marathon Petroleum, obviously, at these levels. Next one on the list, Valero. Uh, I, I do like Valero, like I said. I mean, it's one of the few companies that is, uh, or no, that's Devon Energy. Valero is still a little bit uh, expected to decline in terms of uh, its earnings. But this right here is going to be the uptrend. We got a nice breakout here. Uh, and then, of course, right now we're in a range bound pattern with a support sitting roughly at $96, $97 with a resistance at 146 147 So that right there is going to be that level to watch. And right now, looks like we are coming up to that level for, for Valero. Next one on the list is going to be Occidental. And Occidental here, consolidation sideways for such a long time. So not really going anywhere. Lots of back and forth here in that range. Resistance at $75, $76. That's a much more important support. And then another one sitting at $66 per share. That's going to be in line with this previous support levels that we've validated in the past. And a very strong support sitting in the $51, $52. And probably even another one sitting right here at $55 to as low as $60 per share for Occidental. And finally, we get to Devon Energy. Devon, like I said, I do like along with Occidental Petroleum, considering the numbers that we have just looked at. This right here is the higher highs and the higher lows. And now it's starting to consolidate as most energy companies are. And right now there is going to be a lot of consolidation. This is the range within which it's trading and $55 is going to be that support, uh, excuse me, that resistance. We've gone rejected there a couple of times and 4368 is going to be that support. We've validated that level a couple of times. And right now it does seem like it's making a very nice sort of ascending support and a little bit of a higher high and higher low as well. Very, very short uh, uptrend channel. So if it does kind of retrace back up to that resistance, this is going to be that level at $55, $56 per share. So let me know in the comment section down below, which companies do you like in the energy sector? Like the bottom line is like the growth is not really there. So these are mostly value slash dividend stocks um, to consider. But of course, if oil prices continue to move higher as they have been over the last several months, it's possible that these companies also gain that momentum back higher. Higher oil prices obviously means more revenue for these companies. So let me know in the comment section below which ones do you like. As always, if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.